Hey guys, Nui here, and welcome to my first real kind of guide when it comes to how I theorycraft. So, um, or for, well, I guess my first real guide to PoE, but my first real guide to how I theorycraft, um, as far as, like, um, theorycrafting, just, you know, making my own builds and stuff like that. As I stated before, I never really got into following other people's builds when I first started playing PoE, and the game is very very can be very very uh difficult to tackle when it comes to new players um it's very there's a lot of stuff that goes involved with making builds there's a lot of different um items in duration there's a lot that is really involved that isn't fully explained now um 3.0's release did also come with a nice little guide in game that helps newer players get more involved with the game but there's still plenty of stuff that it doesn't fully cover or really explain well so um, and I know, I know I can't really cover all of that, um, I would love to, and maybe in the future I will be able to, but right now I really just want to talk about, like, creating builds and how I started up creating builds and how I go about creating my builds, because I feel like, um, that'll help newer players because they might not understand the skills and everything involved with the game outright, but if they're able to create comfortable builds where it suits them as a player, as well as giving them a nice amount of survivability and skill or er, survivability and stuff throughout the games then it helps you to really learn the game as far as the little aspects because then you just don't have to worry so much about you know dying or things like that and you can really sit down and focus on crafting stuff for you as a character so um how i start about the first thing um i go about doing whenever i create a build um because I don't really think about meta builds or anything like that. I don't really look at like stuff like that. I just go um, based off of what skill I've seen or what skill I've played with or and really like just mess around with but really haven't gotten into. And then I really go back and then I go and look at that skill and then I'll devise a build off of that. So the first thing for me whenever I create a build is to start out by... Um, I'll start out right here on the Path of Exile wiki, which is just pathofexile.gamefeeder.com. Um, slash path of Exile wiki um i'll leave the link in that below in the description below so you guys don't have to figure it out or anything like that but this is where i start out um it's got so so much information so if you like to just read like i do because i'll just sit around here if i'll just hang out in a streamer's channel and just read and i'll i'll learn more and more about the game this is how i really got into um the game and how i really started learning more and more without having to go around to different channels and ask a whole bunch of questions i just sit here and read now, I know every other player can't do that, but it's here for you guys if you ever need it. So, the most important thing for me is, when I started here, was skill gems. There's a nice skill gems tree, and it shows all of these skill gems in the game. So, you can just go through here and go through all these skill gems and stuff like that. And then, it, as you click them, they go to the different skills involved. So, this is where I start whenever I make a build, because this lets me... First off, I just find the skill that I like, so... um most recent skill I made, uh, I just made the Frozen Vortex build. Um, so I'll go to Blade Vortex, and this is how I really started thinking about how I wanted to do vor Blade Vortex. So my Blade Vortex build takes into account um, Blade Vortex's physical damage scaling as well as the fact that it's a spell. So it scales off the spell damage, it scales off the physical damage, and then you, if you convert physical damage to a different damage type, it'll also convert the damage of Blade Vortex. So I, that's how I came up with my Frozen Raider. So, the way this works for you guys is, it starts out here and it shows you guys the base damage, physical damage, spell damage, stuff like that. It starts to tell you all the different breakdowns of the skills, so you guys are able to find skills that you want to use. So that's how I started out with, is started, I started out with my skill gems. Is The first thing I look at is just what skill do I want to play. The next thing I think about is my playstyle. Now, my playstyle is kind of all-encompassing where I'm pretty much comfortable on any build except for like uh except for like uh um really I hate summoning summoning builds so like uh summoner builds just like any builds that really rely on summoning different items like you know um summon skelly summon um you know weapons or enchanted weapons or anything like that any of those skills I really really don't like so I don't really focus on skills like that I don't mind totems or anything like that but I don't like summoning skeletons because it just I, I prefer to play to my playstyle. So that's how I think about the second thing, is my playstyle. How do I want to play these builds? How do I want to 
play out when I go through the game and how do I want to do everything like that. I prefer melee builds, so I typically stay in between like blade vortex, skills like that, different things that are melee builds. But I also like spell casting, so stuff like that. So I'm fine with any of these skills. I'm fine with stuff like that. But I, it's always important to figure out what kind of playstyle you like. Um, the next thing I look at is as far as like what class do I want to do? Now, I don't really worry so much about the class. Um, because of the freedom of the skill tree, as you guys have seen, and how it all connects overall, I don't really so much think about my class. Um, as far as, like, anything, I don't get bogged down in what classes. What I really do when it comes to my classes is how the skills are best supported by the class. So which class supports my skill the best? Now, I know um, this makes it a little bit difficult, especially when you're looking at the tree. Um, and I'll just open up a new tree for you guys real quick. Uh, especially when you're looking at the tree, um, you can just look at it as you can see, everything is connected, but at the same time, it's a little bit difficult for certain classes to reach certain areas. However, it's still possible. So this is what I really worry about when I come to my classes. Like if I make a flame totem build, um, now Marauders are great for flame totem because they have all the flame damage and all that stuff from this, but you can also make a flame totem build with this over here for um, uh, Templars, or if you really, really felt like it because Flame Totem still scales off of spell damage, you could even make an Elementalist Flame Totem build. So you can make a ton of Flame Totem builds or just off of looking at the tree, even though you know that this class is specifically for it, you can still scale out well and be able to make um, a suitable build that you will enjoy based off of your class liking. For me, I, I love shadows. I really do love shadow class, but a lot of my builds end up being raider classes. Um, I am, a lot of my characters are actually raiders, um, duelists, and witches. Even though I really love the uh, shadow class, and when I first start out thinking of the build, I typically start out in the shadow class. What I find, end up finding out when I create these classes is that raider actually is a little bit stronger and more towards my playstyle when I create it. And it gives me more survivability in towards the game. So that's how I kind of... So even though I love Shadow and I like Shadow the absolute best, it's still my favorite class. A lot of my builds end up being Raider raider builds or Ranger builds or Duelist builds or things like that. Just because they have a more comfortable build path for me. So that's, that's, how, I wanna, that's how I really go about it. Um, the next thing I try to do as far as after I have all that stuff is the stats involved in the items. So... Now, PoE is a little bit different as far as items is because any class can use any item as long as they have the stats and stuff involved for it. So even if you're a witch and you're all the way up here and you have a ton of intelligence and stuff, um, you can actually scale the tree out very nicely and still be able to come down here and get into projectile damage, stuff like that, and still kind of run builds like that. You can still have a bow as long as you have the dexterity run the build. So I, that's why... Um, it's not very important to, it only becomes important to pick your type, your weapon type a little bit later into the build as far as everything that's involved. You don't need to focus on that and you don't need to get bogged down on that at starting out the game. So like, when I first started the game, I was a shadow, so I was like, alright, I'll pick daggers. Not realizing, shadows can use, like, shadows... Um, though they really are comfortable with daggers and claws and stuff like that, they can also use bows really easily. It's very easy to scale down the tree and be and and branch out into different things. It's very easy to run a spell damage shadow. It's very easy to run things like that. It's very easy to run these builds. And as long as you're you have the creativity to go at it and really sit down and think about um how you want to craft your build, how you want to play it, and everything like that, you don't need to get so bogged down as far as like how items work or what items are specifically necessary because once you start crafting the build you'll be able to formulate a way for your your character to have everything you want um so that's what i really think about when it comes to skills or stat points and stuff like that you always want to have a nice rounded amount of stat points so you always want like uh a nice, a nice point to, point basis to have basically is everyone everything you want over like 111, uh, uh between 111 and 155 because that's when you can hit about max level gems is about 155 for every stat. Now you don't need this for every stat, and it's better. It's often not the best to have for every stat, but if you have that kind of thought line in process, um, 
when it comes to stats, you'll be able to round out your build so that you can run more different things. And then if you end up having to respect that build or you don't like the build or anything like that, instead of just deleting the character, you can actually just change out skills and then because your your build will have so much flexibility from the amount of stat points you have. Um, so that's, that's really what I think of when it comes to stats. Now the next thing I think of after stats and stuff like that, and after I've chosen my class, after I've figured out my skill and what I use and what skill gems and what class and everything like that, that's when I start really looking at, you know, the skill tree. That's when I really start sitting down and I really start branching out my skill tree. I really start getting all these things involved and all of those things that, um, everything that really needs to be necessary. Now for me, here I'm just, I'm just going to point out three, my, my top five things when it comes to my builds and how I'm comfortable, most comfortable with my builds. Now for me, every build that I like to make, I like to have about 200% bonus health. Now, as far as hard, I don't, I don't particularly play hardcore or anything like that. I don't, I don't like to play solo, self found or anything like that. Mostly because I enjoy the multiplayer aspect of this game. So I enjoy being able to run around with friends. I enjoy being able to trade and I enjoy seeing other people. Whereas when you're in solo, self found and in, in hardcore, you're more focused on yourself. Even though hardcore can also be played with multiplayer, you're still a little bit more focused on yourself because you're so worried about not dying and things like that. So they, they tend to scale more towards heavy health builds, heavy resistance builds, and things like that. Whereas in in, in normal mode, basically, uh, which is just the legacy or the league, whatever current league we're in, um, you can kind of have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to your builds. So I still like to round out about 200% health, but I don't really focus as heavily on, hey, I need absolute cap reses. I like to get some reses. I definitely don't suggest you make a build without reses, but I definitely don't think you need to sit down and worry so, so much about, oh my god, I don't have, like, I don't have maximum capped out reses on everything. You can, you can get away with quite a bit about, without having that, those kind of reses. And as you get towards end game, um, you actually are able to craft reses onto your armor and stuff like that. So aren't, it's not so... Don't be so bogged down on, I need this much health, I need this much resistance, I need this much of everything. You can seriously flexibility on based on your playstyle and how comfortable you are. Like for me, when I'm running early maps, I don't really need as much health as other people do because I focus my builds more towards the defensives. So what I mean by defenses are um, armor, energy shield, and evasion. Those are your three big defenses. So um, I focus my builds more heavily towards those than I do just flat out health. Now, other players will typically just run more health and stuff and less defenses and stuff like that. But for me, I don't really want to do that. I prefer to run higher, real higher defenses and then a decent amount of health pool. So for me, when I get some maps, I typically only have about, I typically have between 3,500 and Typically between 3,000 and 3,500 health is where I typically am at when I hit maps. Now, typically end game players like to have a little bit more than that, and as they scale their tree, they get more than that. And for me, I even end up typically having more than that. Um, but for me, I liked that that amount with the amount of defenses I typically get, because I typically get all of my defenses before they're in. Um, usually makes it very, very comfortable where I have a very comfortable rate where I don't get hit too, too hard. I don't take too much damage. I won't get hit too much where I'm very comfortable with my builds so it really comes down to you as a player but for me I just want to make a couple guidelines quickly for you guys like how you want to make builds so for me I like to have about 200% max health uh 200% increased maximum health I should say so what you're going to do when you're crafting builds is you're just going to type in you're going to type in health something like that and then you're going to uh just look for or not health life I should say and then as you can see you can see all of these different life trees and stuff like that so you guys will be able to look around see all the different health nodes get all your different values and kind of calculate off of that i didn't mean to click this um let me take away that but you'll be able to get your kind of health regen to health regen health life life leech things like that this is what you really want to focus on so like i i'm comfortable around 200 percent mark um any build i have around 200 percent, which means a little bit under a little bit higher is comfortable for me I have some builds up around 250% increased health. I have some builds around 190% health. But that's that's my comfort level. It's right in that range is where I'm comfortable at. Now, for you as a player, you might be comfortable like 300% health, and that's fine. It just you have to understand that you're going to be decreasing some of your damage. So what 
that's what a lot of a lot when a lot of um streamers talk of streamers and long time players talk about that this is what they mean by min maxing because you have to understand that when you add more of one thing you're going to be taking away some of the other so now i know a lot of people won't always talk about like what min maxing actually is but that's what min maxing really is is what it comes down to it when you get your tree you have to be willing to sacrifice some things in exchange for other things so creating the best builds really comes down to creating builds that take into the best account of min maxing and finding the best values for you as a player to be able to survive clear everything comfortably and not worry about dying while still being able to enjoy your build still being able to enjoy your skills that you're involved and really feeling the self-confidence that you created this build and you're able to conquer things with it that's that's what it feels like to be max so i get like the 200 percent. and then when it comes to resistances if i'm on one resistance so if i'm running just energy shield just evasion just armor i like to have about anywhere between um Anywhere between 300 to 350 is comfortable for me. That's what I like to have for, if I'm narrowing it down to just one of any statue. That's what I like to have for about 300%. Now, when I'm running dual persistencies, um, it's a little bit easier to actually run it. So I ended up having closer to about um, four to 500% percent um, combined. So I'll have like, for instance, I'll have... Um, you, again, using my Raider build, I had about 300% evasion and about 150% um, armor. So that's that's the nice combination I like to get is what I like to scale about that 400-500 mark for the, between the both of them, split between the both of them. Um, I typically will end up scaling more towards one or the other, but it's fine either way. And that's what, like the mark I like to have. And then when it comes to damage, I like to have about 300% increased damage. So whatever damage type I have, I like to have about 300% increase. Now, this can be a little bit different to understand fully because when damage, the way damage works is not just the base damage number, it's also taking into account the whatever weapon you're using. So if you're running swords, you can get increased damage where it specifically increases your damage when you're using a sword or an axe or whatever. And then you can just have basic physical damage nodes. So it'll just be increases your damage based off just basic physical damage. So like that, it's just 14% flat physical damage overall so those those i like to really do and i'll write to balance that out about 300 percent um either between those two or overall those two so a lot of my builds end up being closer to about four or five hundred percent um just because of the way the build trees scaled out it ends up very very easy for me to scale into those things like that for instance actually i'll pull up my pull up my talking since i continue talking about my reader build i'll just pull up my reader build right now let you guys look at my frozen vortex build i actually tweaked it a little bit to give myself a little bit more health so this is what my frozen Ra Tra raider tree looks like um so as you guys can see over here i have about 229 percent increased life so right right above my number that i was talking about um i have well over every single every single stat over 155 so it's very comfortable now ignore the dps numbers that's just me playing around but um now my damage can definitely end up very high around that, but, I, but it's very nice for that. So as you can see, nice amount of evasion, nice 250, 85% increased evasion, 20% extra energy shield. So there's my 300% right there. So I get a nice amount from right there and that's what I'm sitting on. Um, so as you guys can see, I have cap reses. I have cap cold res, but I don't have cap fire or lightning res. And I'm okay with that because um, when it comes down to it, I am still ending up running um, a fire resistance ring and a lightning resistance ring, and then I'm comfortable, and I have capped reses overall. So I get a nice amount of reses and everything like that. Um, I don't... As a new player, um, you need to understand, chaos damage is in the game, but it's not super heavy it's not super prevalent so there's not a huge amount of bosses with it so you don't need to super focus on having capped out chaos res though it is nice to have and especially if you can have it then i definitely suggest you take it but if you can't have it it's not end all be all so don't be too heavily focused on it but as you can see my tree is nicely scaled out and even though it's a raider um, I still scale out all the way up on, over here into the witch side a little bit into the templar side i scale into the shadow side I don't just keep it so narrowed down to just a raider, what this raider can do here. You're able to branch out super well into everything you want to go into, and you're able to branch out very, very well. 
So for this build, I ended up having a really, really nice amount of damage. Um, while still having nice amount of survivability, good, good, um, good prevention from getting reflected damage, a couple of skill sockets, a lot of health, a lot of uh, life regen, things like that. I'm able to scale very, very well into everything that I want to do. So this is how I really planned out the tree. Now, when I first originally made this build, I started out in the shadow tree. But as I started scaling down and as I started looking through the ascendancy classes, I realized the increased elemental damage as well as the increased onslaught effect and stuff like that makes this build even more comfortable. So I immediately, and when I wanted to convert the damage here, I needed this node. Now, it's still possible to reach this from a shadow node, but it's easier if I start here and I get better health. Even though I can have higher damage, better health is a little bit more comfortable for me. So, I decided to instead run it as a raider. So now, I have my whole skill tree planned out. I have everything set up. I have everything ready to go. And I'm comfortable with this build as far as everything here. So, I already have all the skills, all my skill, all the skills I want planned out. Everything like here. Everything as far as buffs, how they work together. All the shield charge, everything like that, and all my movement abilities, so I have all my skills planned out and set to go. So this is how I craft builds and everything that I need and everything that's involved. So that's kind of how I, I go about it. Now, the last thing you really need to worry about, and this is, again, this is seriously the last thing you guys need to worry about, is unique items. Now, as you can see in this build, I involved quite a few unique items. A lot of them are flasks, some of them are armor and stuff like that. Now, these were... For me, these really boosted the damage of the build and made it as strong as it really is. But f when you're first creating a build, first off, you're going to be broke. At the end, beginning of every single every single league, you're going to be broke as hell. You're not going to have items, you're not going to have gear, you're not going to have unique items. Every player in the game is not going to have unique items. You're not going to be able to find the unique items you want specifically or anything like that. So when you first create builds, don't so much focus on uniques. Don't make a build based off of one unique. When you're new to the game when you're old uh, veteran to the game you can make a build specifically off of one unique because well they have more currency they have more comfortability with the game they're willing to already have a league starter they're typically running meta builds even though i don't like to run meta builds they're typically running a meta build um so they're able to just farm up sit down and farm up currency and then they're able to just buy whatever unique they need no matter how much it costs and then they're able to just go into creating a build from that but as a new player you're not going to have that same that same level of skill or the same level of basically cash so what you really want to focus on is just how the build works as far as everything involved and then get a basic setup for it and then you can start looking at uniques you can start looking into what uniques you want and what uniques you you really help augment your build without sacrificing anything and what really helps you become a stronger player and a stronger character as far as that build is involved without having to take away too too much from the build itself so when it comes down to it don't start out with just like don't start out with just your builds don't start out with crafting builds or anything like that don't start out with things like that start out with your skills start out with how they everything works together start out with how, how much health you need how much what class you want to play how your play style works think start out with things like that don't so much focus on the actual the actual unique items you need and then when you finally have all everything you already planned out you can even head over to the wiki go over here and come over to the unique item area of equipment head over here and then they have a nice, nice, unique section. Um, if you go to just, if for example, if I just go to body armor, they have a nice, unique section. So I can just scale down and see all the different types of body armor, stuff like that, and keep scrolling. And then once you get down to the bottom, you can actually click uniques. So there's a nice unique tag right here. So when you click uniques, it'll sell you all the unique items for that particular body part, that particular gear piece. So like as I'm carrying on body armors, this is all unique body armors and stuff in the game. So what you want to really focus on if you're using an ender shield, all you have to do now, because you already started out with the thought in your mind that you want to use ender shield, all you have to do is go, okay, click here, go to all the energy shield things, and then you're able to see all the different things that really give you a nice amount of energy shield. So this is specifically, I clicked energy shield evasion. So these are dexterity intelligence energy shield invasion things like that but if i click if i just wanted an energy shield by itself then i can come down here and see all the just solely energy shield builds and stuff like that so this is how you guys really want to plan out 
and, and get comfortable with the game before you really focus on what uniques I need and what things like that. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I hope you guys are um, have find a lot of things to take away from. I know I did a lot of talking and I didn't actually craft a build or anything like that, but this is this is what I think about when I go into builds and I wanted to help you guys out as new players um, as far as just hopping into the game and being able to understand how to craft a build and go about crafting your own build. And the last thing I really want to say to you guys Enjoy the game. PoE is so much fun to me, but like, if you end up just only following other people's builds, I feel like it takes away from the fun because it takes away the creativity that this game offers. There's so much room for creativity, and I understand that you're gonna die sometimes, but that's okay. You know, you learn, you learn from failure. You learn from not succeeding all the time. If you succeed all the time, then you don't learn as much as someone who fails a lot because then you don't you don't have all the experience of not succeeding so what i really want you guys to do when you go into this game and you start crafting your own bills just enjoy them enjoy what they they might not have the best damage they might have not have the best survivability or things like that but enjoy what you created if you keep enjoying what you created you're going to be more determined to create bills that can conquer more and more and as then we'll get to see even newer builds even crazier things that i can't even think of that you guys will come up with and i just i'm so excited for that because i still get to see all i still go around and check out other people's builds and i'll still look at things and i'll still check out things like that and then i'll create my own builds off of those ideas and that's how this game can really keep evolving because it gives us so so much to work with and if we just bog down to the same kind of meta builds then it, to me it just feels like it's taking away from the game and i know you guys I know meta builds are great because then you get to just run through things, you get to conquer things, you feel really strong, but I feel like it takes away from the uniqueness of the game, and I don't want to see that happen. So I just wanted to get this video out to talk about how I craft builds and give you guys as new players a little bit of help. So I hope you guys learned some things, hope you guys enjoyed this video, I'll catch you all later. Nui out. Heaven sent my residence, it's heaven, just visit.